The ultimate things in life are free, and we're keeping it that way. Subscribe to keep up with the latest games, tournaments, and community content. Share it with your team and friends, and drop a like to help spread ultimate to more people. Spread the word, spread the love. I'll keep that A group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. He's in a great spot. Yeah. He's in a perfect spot. Yes, his massive head has blocked everything. Oh. That was a huge play, yeah, but we have seen face. none of it. Finney, Finney, he's done it. Good afternoon and welcome to the c live coverage of the Joint Junior Ultimate Championships out of Wroclaw in Poland. We are bringing you live action from the last round of games today featuring Germany women under 20 and New Zealand women also under 20. Coincidentally. Conveniently, <laughs> yes, otherwise it wouldn't it wouldn't work. The voice you just heard is the one of Benjamin Rees joining me in the booth for this last round. I'm Christina Obermeyer. I'm very happy OTTV can bring you all the live coverage this week. Yeah, it's been a thrill to be able to, uh, quite short notice, be able to broadcast from Field 1 all week, five games a day, up, all the way up until finals day as well with our ulti TV crew. And this is one of the games that was voted for by members of our Patreon. Thank you very much to everyone who has signed up. I hope we can bring you a banger and it's worth worth your support. Yeah, and we've seen Germany a few times. They get a lot of public support. And there's been a huge push from, uh, from the other side of the world as well to get New Zealand on stream. So hopefully the time difference isn't too, uh, isn't too jarring for you. And we've still got some uh, Kiwis watching this either live or on demand. And I must say, this is a game that I'm very excited about. Yeah, me too. Definitely going to be a banger. We, we don't see New Zealand quite as often on a live stream. <laughs> me personally. I is mean that we, collective? Yeah, not for us, of course, because we're based in, uh, well, we're based in Europe. Ulti TV, of course, is uh, reaching around the globe, and we have our team based in Australia as well. So they will have more familiarity with New Zealand than I will. But I must say, they're, uh, yeah, both sides coming into this with very different experiences of the tournament so far. How have they done so far, Benji? Germany are 0 and 3. They went down tight to Italy 15 13 in their first game. Went down 15 2 to USA and 12 9 to Austria. Whereas New Zealand beat Austria 15 14 and then Italy 15 9. So, a slight advantage for New Zealand coming into that game, just solely looking at the stats. But here we are underway with a, a zone setup for New Zealand to start Germany on offense. Yeah, according to the records, New Zealand are the favorites, but they're certainly not taking their opposition lightly. Germany working it in the handler set. Algaia 
looking for Maya Bootling, who has the disc jump in and out of her hands. And that is a red zone opportunity for New Zealand. Whitlock with a put into the end zone. And that is a one pass break for the New Zealand side. I would, I would certainly be keeping an eye on Emma Whitlock. She leads the team in assists. That's now her eighth of the tournament to go along with a goal as well. Not bad, especially looking that I would I would expect her playing on the D line. Yeah, you would out. you would think actually, you know, maybe you're not gonna get so many stats to your name. But clearly making a big impact when they do get the turnover with their stifling zone defence. I had a chance to speak to head coach Ian Stewart before the game and he was saying that that's, that's their playbook. On offence, they, like they like to open things up a little bit, uh, you know, get their athletic players with a chance to chase down some discs, keep themselves loose and have fun. But defensively, they play zone defence and they play it well. Yeah, we saw that. Germany didn't really have a lot of connections to go on rather than just having the pop little passes through the handlers. And now Germany with the second opportunity on offense. We see a completely new line for the German side on. Getting a fresh seven out there. Kintrup, the skin hand, looking for an option. Franz Franke. Yeah. Taking the reset to go to heart. It's not that windy here, but I think this just shows the faith that the Carho have in their zone defense. Oh, and that disc again just bubbled off of the body of the German player. And now another opportunity for New Zealand to get up a second break. But Franke reads that disc very well and is in position early to get that disc. And she is going to chuck it deep. So much space for Bankwitz to get that disc. And the zone is set up again. It took a long time for her to get any support back in that handling space, but eventually finds it in the form of Franca, who, as he mentioned, intercepted that disc for the turnover. Bankwitz again, high grab and collected easily. Inside shot, opening up the field, but Germany cannot connect on that yet <laughs> and what a play for this first point she completely turned around once and then finds Peterson in the end zone completely open with a ballerina turn that's that style it's interesting because you could see that Germany were really trying to focus on finding those resets and New Zealand could see that as well so they really focused in on getting players close to the disc behind trying to stop those reset options and then when the handler turned round, just saw a target right open front and centre in the end zone. Seeing it again now on the replay. There's the, uh, there's the first deep shot that really opened things up to Bankwitz, taking advantage of the fact that uh, yeah, New Zealand may be a little bit sleepy after the turn and then the score into the end zone. I think that might be Turno rather than uh, Pedersen. Good for Tano to get her for the first goal of Germany in the on the board. But there would have been two players. Did you see that there was someone else behind her even? So good a good option. Yeah, it certainly Safety proves to first. be. Yeah. Tano play, uh, mostly plays her club ultimate in the mixed division, being based out of Marburg. Of course, that means she plays for the uh, the ugly aardvarks of Hashlika Erdferkel. Well done, Benji. I'm, that's about the German, only German I know. German I'm very proud of it. German done very well. Danke. See, there's more, you know. <laughs> okay, fair. Bowen with the disc. Quick movement. Fulton. Back to Bowen again. Puts it, it over to the near side of the pitch. This is the first time we're seeing New Zealand start on offense and Germany start on defense. And Germany going with a zone as well. Interesting, very similar look, but they're opening up the field as they have called it. The shot floating, but not long enough for the New Zealand player to collect it. Yeah, it's Whitlock again, 
showing that New Zealand have no fear when shooting deep. They will take these options, and if they don't, if they don't work, well, they back themselves to get the turn in short order. Looks like they're going match, matchup now. Maura opening up to comfort, for comfort, and she's gonna sh shoot it deep. But there goes the poached defender in Whitlock. She's read that really well, using those long strides to churn up the ground in front of her and pick that off. Far side of the field now, Simard going over the top and tr trying to search Whitlock for Whitlock, but finds the German player who gets a D. Comfort. Up the line and a huge shot down the field. Very floaty though, but caught. There's going to be a discussion about whether that catch was made in bounds. I'm going to look at it now on the low angle. Feels like the defender has position. Whoa. That might be just... Just out of bounds. It might be a tiniest tiptoe on the line there. From I Hulk. think so, yeah. Let's see if we can get this in super slow motion. Oh, it's, it's so close, that. And they're going to decide that actually that first point of contact is on the line. So New Zealand will get the disc back. Yeah, right decision from my perspective. Yeah, the important decision, the important resolution is that the players on the field were happy with it. Exactly. Larson into the middle for Claridge. And Whitlock with the tr trigger on her, but not ups not to take it. Shot goes up anyway, and that's a goal. Oh, oh, Claridge on. this time shooting it deep. Yeah, Ocean Simard, not really, not really been a featured scorer necessarily for New Zealand. Only two goals so far to go along with one assist. That will be her third goal. Well, but clearly we saw her a couple of times there. She was the option that they were looking for. Well, it's, it's early in the tournament. She still has, has some time to make her mark on that team. And if she continues to, do, to cut like that, she's going to have plenty more of those goals to her name. Yeah, of course, they, they've only played two games as opposed to three for the Germans. So uh, not necessarily as many uh, opportunities to accumulate those stats on that time, just streaking deep towards the break side. And that's, that's why that swing is so important. Because if you can time those cuts properly off it, You've got to create yourself really clear opportunities. You have, you have very open players. Uh, yeah. So New Zealand have the strategy of they name all their teams after native animals. This is partly because as well as rather than being we are just Team New Zealand, it helps build each each unit, build their own identity and culture. Uh, for the under-20 women, it's the Kahu, which is a type of eagle, I'm told. Oh, is it? Nice. That's really cute. Yeah, I like that tradition, especially because I feel like they have so many uh, animals that I have never heard of. Yeah, it's a nice little learning experience for oh. us. The under-20 open side were the Kartipo, which is uh, New Zealand's only native venomous animal, I think. It's a spider. Oh, yeah. Not so a fan of spiders, but... Yeah, learning. Yeah. Rücker for Germany. Puts it into the hands of Kintrup. Expect to see Rucker getting an awful lot of the disc, five assists and three goals to her name. Good for her. An important part of that German side. It's also the central handler for this line. The zone working really hard to prevent anything downfield and doesn't really get a lot of option now, finds Peterson. Yeah, I feel like this is one of the patterns we've seen throughout this tournament, actually, is that teams playing really good zone defences and forcing teams backwards as they struggle to really synergise what's going on in the backfield with the cutters or uh, downfield players trying to find their own spaces. Franke now on the far side. Thinks about that deep shot, doesn't take it. Gets again into Peterson instead, and she's going to launch it deep into the arms of Swinson. And that is another break opportunity for New Zealand. 
I got a pointer from someone on the sideline to watch out for Tessa Swinson. It was the number 38 from New Zealand's open side, her brother Hugo. Oh, nice. They just bring the same numbers as well. That is really cute. I'm not sure what happens if they have to play on the same side. Uh, 83 and 38, maybe? That'd be cute. Arm wrestle for it, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> So New Zealand just in front of the end zone. Looking for a reset. Stall has to be high and over the top into the ground. That is a get out of jail free card for Germany. A little bit, but also you can say that, you know, bend but don't break style defense. You can let them go most of the way, but just stiffen up at the end. Yeah, I agree. You're right. Huge huck going up, hitting it. Is it going to hit the camera? Not quite, and it works for Franke. Well, that was a slow motion thing, and I think everyone looked rather looked at the disc rather than start playing D here. Yeah, I'm not sure quite how that happened. I think Swinson was just kind of caught disc watching a little bit. Bankwitz now into the hands of a New Zealand player, which gives them another opportunity for a break. Alone in the handler set now has to find another option, which she finds up the line of flick. High release flick kind of. Uh, try to reel in it. Yeah, I saw you, but just not. Just a little bit off target. Didn't quite look comfortable with the disc on that occasion. Peterson. Up the line. Huge fake, but Rücker opts to not take it. Tries to hit Bankwitz on that inside, but this shot is very difficult, so cannot connect this time around. Nice grab, what a layout bid. Full extension and puts the disc up for a huge gainer. That's superbly done by Mather. Another big gain of yards for the New Zealand side. Sawyer goes back for the reset. And what a grab. So many high grabs that are reeled in from the New Zealand side, really putting the disc into spaces where only their receivers can get under there. But now the disc just out of the reach. And this gives Germany another opportunity to get a hold here. Kintrup looking for Rücker. Kintrup very far on the sideline and that disc cannot be collected. I must admit, I always get anxious when players go and try and catch the trailing edge as Schutzweil did there. Trying to scoop it in from behind is difficult because the spin is naturally taking it away from you. Schutzwild. One of the newer additions to that team, I believe. Oh, and that's a drop, a uh, hand block. Yeah, I thought Weber was thinking about calling the foul yeah. and then decided against it. So with, with this particular throw, I feel like it often is. Yeah. Kind of a foul, I don't know. It feels like that because she had that forehand go all right earlier, she yeah. was just too hesitant to put it and went for the backhand when that time really should have been the flick. And that is an easy goal for Germany now. They worked it very well from one side to the other, collecting their second point of the game. Yeah, Turno catching hers and Germany's second goal. It feels like New Zealand are definitely more comfortable when they've got time to set up that zone defense. Yeah, but so far so close before the end zone that zone defense just it's, it's tricky to get set up in time it's it's harder cuz you don't you don't have to y you you have this deep element that is taken away from you and it really puts less pressure on on the offense because tight sp you can you can work it through tight spaces and that still works whereas if you have the whole field to work with you can just spread out better place your defense better so these two teams are in pool a in the under 20 women's division 
Uh, the format of the under-20 women's is you have two pools of five teams, ten teams overall. The top two teams in each pool go into a power pool where you replay all the games. The other three teams in the pool go into a lower power pool where uh, you don't replay the games where you don't necessarily replay the games. The top two teams in the top pool go straight to the semi-finals. The other two teams in that top pool play the top two teams in the bottom pool in essentially like a, a play-in game, really, and then semis and finals from there. So even if you don't finish in the top two of your pool, there is still a path to the gold medal. So redemption if you can beat any one of the other very good teams that are here. Yeah, although New Zealand, with a win here, would seal a place in that top power pool. Yeah, they are very impressive to look at from what we've seen, or what I've seen. As they're working it down the field. That zone of Germany looks a bit loose. Yeah, the car who looking very comfortable, but that time just got a little bit greedy with it. And there was the waiting hand of Hermeking. Yeah, this time around, not connecting the two, the number fours matching up here. Anakin and Whitlock. Maya Botling gets a disc on a reset, slips, but holds her footing now. It's always, always a little bit concerning when you see players slip like that, but good to see that she's okay. Yeah. Hammer King finds an option in the middle of the field. And that is a hand block. That is an emphatic hand block. Wagner cannot come up with that. And this is an opportunity for New Zealand. What a big throw that's collected by King Griffin. What a read on that disc, jumping higher than her defender. No, no doubt she was going to be there first. And that time, King Griffin is king or queen of the castle rising higher to snatch that one away. And then again, we saw that off the quick pickup, New Zealand going back to a, yeah, going back to, how do I want to put this? Not the safe option, but it's it's kind of the, the hallmark of the, the game. It's, it's those deep shots. Yeah, it's, it's their number one plan. Their bread and butter. Yeah, that, that is a good one, their yeah. bread and butter. I assume they eat bread and butter in New Zealand. I don't see why they wouldn't. I wouldn't know. I've never been. No, me neither. I've always wanted to. It's just, a, you know, kind of on the other side of the world. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Someone needs to host like a big international tournament in New Zealand. Oh, don't get them any go. ideas. I don't want to. I want to go. I want to go, but I want to have fun there. I don't want to play frisbee, you know? Well, yeah, I didn't. You could go as a player. No, I don't. I don't want to. I want to chill out. I want to see the surroundings. I want to not necessarily go there for a frisbee because then you have a week of being you there. You can't and really. Yeah, you can't really see anything of the country because, like, you're 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 in this in this amazing different country and all you see is a grass field that is yeah. just the same. I mean, of course, you get to to meet new players and play against international teams, but you really can't do that to New Z when New Zealand is playing you here changing the subject to what we are seeing in front of our eyes. Big shot going up by Ogilev, and that is collected by Simard for the New Zealand break. Second goal of the game for Simard. So when they're picking these downfield receivers, they don't really seem to care about stature. It's just, you know, how open are they? And in that occasion, certainly open enough. I like this look, though. The handler there, Ogilvy, running through. That means that the defender's a little bit behind her. So rather than go with maybe a less comfortable flick, she's got space to step into the backhand huck deep. And she's catching the disc, already looking downfield at the next option. And the huck was tried and true. Just going back to the previous point, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, think about... I'm very fortunate to have been all over Europe this year, been here, been to your home city of Vienna, yes. been to Amsterdam, Limerick, and I've seen grass fields in all of them, and not necessarily an awful lot else. Uh, but uh, now I'm interested, which one was the best? Which, which, which destination had the best grass fields? Good question. 
That is a very good question. Do you never not have a ranking yet, Benji? <laughs> to be fair, uh, actually, the fields at the London Invite like were really lush, Cancel and I feel down. really, but I feel bad saying that because it's oh, they were it's so the dull. easiest to me. But they they were so good. They were moan every night to have this the striped look. Which yeah, I really loved. I also thought that given given the weather that we had that week, the pitches in Limerick held up remarkably. I hear there might be more big tournaments there on the horizon, which oh I look yeah, forward I to. Oh yeah, that too. every day. Germany trying to connect on that reset, but can't. Klimesh not able to run that down, and that's another very short field opportunity for. New Zealand and she uh, under jumps that disc giving it back to Germany with I want to say with no fight but she really could have gotten there yeah it feels like That's she just right. got caught two underneath it and saw that it was going out of that far sideline we know that Whitlock can drive the offense told out to look for Tessa, Tessa Swinson as well but that time the two of them just couldn't link up at all just not on the same page Klimesh this time Able to wrap her hands around it. Schutz. And another big reset that is so far out in front and Maya Bootling collects that disc. What a grab. That is ridiculous stuff. It was the right option. I thought it was overthrown, but Maya Bootling had other ideas. Oh no, don't underestimate a young, the young Germans. Oh, and so, hey, I've been made to pay, yeah. So in New Zealand. Schütz to Allgaier. And I feel like some of these German women are little or smaller siblings of, of, of some of some people that I have met or I know in the German Frisbee scene. Maya Bootling. I think she is a little sister of a guy that played for Bora Bears, maybe, who played under 20 for quite some time, and then um, Algaia. Yeah, the name. Sister of Alex Algaia, who plays for Sieben Schwaben. There's a lot of names here that are awfully familiar to me as well. Those Frisbee families. But not in the uh, Dusseldorf sense? No, not in, not, in, not in this sense. But yes, you do see it a lot actually at the junior levels. You know, players, families with players on multiple sides, and you know, you kind of you recognise the parents as well. Yeah, it's uh, a nice family feel to it at times. True, Maya Butling now. Red zone for Germany. Shoots close, but keeps possession, and now they're in front of their end zone, looking for an option. New Zealand still in a bit of a poachy set, and. Germany uses this very well, and there's a discussion whether it, the disc is in or out of bounds. I must admit, from where I'm sitting, I have zero angle on that. Same. Couldn't tell you if I wanted to. Oh, but she jumped I very high. I could not see a line, but she jumped. Look at that. They're going to say that it's uh, in the pitch, although not in the end zone. That's a if that's ever so. Just in front of the end zone, puts it in for the score for Germany, and that is beautiful work. Not trying to put it in on that particular side, but working it around to the other side of the field. Yeah, it's so close, especially when you get, you know, the thing that situation where you think it's in, and then it, and then it gets called out. So often you get preoccupied with just forcing it back into that space. But Camfort does the right thing here. Sees nope, there's nothing downfield. So we're going to take the reset off and then the defenders just on the back heels a little bit and has ceded that open side space to Camfer who burns there and collects that leading pass for the score. So that is a break for Germany? No, a hold for that Germany. That is a hold, yeah. hold for Germany after a very hard fought battle for of a point. Hello to everyone watching in the YouTube chat here on the World Flying Disc Federation YouTube channel. Whether you're uh, in New Zealand or uh, in Germany, it's lovely to have you along with us. 
or anywhere else in the world, of course, of you course, are welcome yeah. as well. But especially the people that are watching particular players, let us know in the chat. We'll give you a shout out. We'll give them a shout out, maybe. If yeah. They're well, if they're good. Sergey shouting out uh, his teammate Hluka, who's a uh, you know, rooting hard. He's rooting hard for her to get her first win. Although obviously, New Zealand fans in chat will be hoping for the exact opposite. Claridge puts it to Brown. Brown getting a reset off and getting it up the line again. Great disc movement from the New Zealand side and another up the line shot. Knocking on the doorstep are New Zealand and the pick is called. That'll stop the play. Very expressive fake there from Bowen. It really looked to me like she wanted to put that, but there was no one ready for it. The coach listening to our commentary and agreeing with us. It's nice when we're right. Doesn't we are always, always right. We have we get to say things. Say it with enough confidence, no one will know the difference. Exactly. On a huge shot over the top. And what a grab. From Lewis. With it. Yeah, I was going to say, she absolutely ripped that one down. A very visionary throw as well. Yeah, I like it opening up. I must admit that I didn't, s when the shot went up, I was... Uh, Skeptical? Yes, <laughs> skeptical is exactly the word. But Bowen clearly has trust in her receivers, and why not? Apparently things to look for. Attempted hucks, that checks out. Cheeky hammers, yet to see those. High pitched yelling on the sideline. I'll take her word for it. I don't want to listen. I don't, I don't want to listen to that. I don't want to search for this. <laughs> Got enough yelling all week. Uh, her sporting hero is uh, Mara Neal, who she describes as an absolute unit in every aspect of the game, and her pulls and hucks are like no other. And Mara Neal's a player who's uh, yeah made her uh, made her presence felt both uh, in New Zealand and uh, in my neck of the woods in the UK as well. And uh, sentiments I think most people will share. Also. Uh, Bowen says that her favourite food is potato salad, which I okay. don't know if potato salad is anyone's favourite food, but well, hers, I mean, evidently, for sure. evidently Maybe it is. Maybe she just wanted to be extra. To be fair, I do really like potato yeah. salad. So uh, favourite food ever? I don't know, but I really like it. In yeah. addition to something, anything that claims to be a salad but is not a salad is good in my book. Sure. Yeah. That poor landing just shy of the brick mark. Maya Botling to pick up and we see New Zealand back in their zone and they have to go back some yards and try to move it over to the other side of the field. It does feel like this German offense is a bit less static now. They've figured out that they need to be a bit more agile and mobile with what they're doing. And the handler said, yes, I agree with you. But in general, they're not, they're not really trying to connect with the downfield. So they're still very very secluded to a small portion of the field. Yeah, it feels like those middle players for New Zealand are really cheating forward because they're not being engaged actively and they're further actually away. At their own end zone line now, pushed back quite a bit. This zone proving to be very effective because every one of those resets gets them back a little bit. How long before they run out of room? Well, that is a drop. They don't have to run out of room, they just have to run out of patience. Clark's going to run towards the disc with a chance to put New Zealand further in front. And that is an easy goal for Fulton. One pass ultimate. Sometimes it's all you need. It had has worked out quite sometimes for the New Zealand side. Very effective, got to say. Yeah, they're creating a little bit of separation now. Up 6-3. Games this week played to 15 in all divisions. Uh, in the under 17s division, uh, time cap is at 80 minutes, but here in under 20s, it's at 100 minutes. So still plenty of life left in this contest as we have a timeout on the field. And as players are trying to recollect their thoughts and to change up a little bit of the system, especially for Germany probably, we'll also take a break, but we'll be back with you in a second.
We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, Ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the Ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. We are back to live action after a word from our sponsors. New Zealand taking on Germany in the under twi 20 women division. They're currently up six to three, got the better of the German side a few times, but it's, it's, it's a battle for sure and it's far from over. as they're pulling towards the German side. Franke in the middle of the pitch. Oh, and a miscommunication and the handler set gives another red zone opportunity to New Zealand. Vivid fakes. Gets it to Whitlock. The car who do not hang around, do not do they? As no, soon as it's don't. turned over, they want to pick it up quickly and get going. Whitlock up the line in so much space. She's looking for an option. She wants something big and she gets it tipped by the German defender. Look at that, a good play there. Good awareness. Yeah, Kinthrop knows that that's exactly where Whitlock is locked into. So he sits in that space and gets the tip out the sideline. But getting it out of this area is very hard and that's a Callahan for New Zealand. She tipped the disc. And there's a retracted call and a goal for New Zealand. What a way to come out of this time up. Well, New Zealand's open side got a Callahan in their stream game yesterday. There. And now their women have done the same. Alicia McCoy is an interesting player. One of the uh, relative rookies on the team. Only been playing a couple of years, but leading the team in, uh, in goals, that'll be her 10th of the tournament wow. with an assist as well. And uh, we, were, we were tipped off in the team survey that we got that uh, Alicia McCoy, the newest player, is also probably the fastest receiver. And you know what? Checks out. Yeah, that works. I can, I can see that. Especially if you are a fast receiver and you can lay out as well. That is so w worth so much. Well, she's clearly not a not not a she's clearly a player who's not afraid to necessarily take a couple of bumps and bruises because she also plays for another New Zealand under twenty women's side, Touch Rugby. Oh, yeah, I know, nice. right? Nice. And I know it's Touch; it's not full contact, but like, still, it's got to be, yeah, that's uh, intense enough. One hundred percent. I always think it's good for. Uh, athletes especially at younger ages to play a lot of different sports find what really fits you best and you can you know extrapolate your skills you learn in one discipline into another yeah that definitely checks out we'll get you some different experiences Maya Bootling in the middle of the field big disc to no specific target but run down by Wagner I was worried that she'd gone up too early for it but credit to her for staying with oh, it and not giving well up. Well, she did. I, I don't think we can argue against her being early, but then redeeming herself in the same play. Maya Butling again into the ground. Just bouncing off the hand of Allgaier. And a shot into the end zone for New Zealand. This is another break. Just making cl clean plays now and quick ones as well. Yeah, it's uh, Brianna Murgatroyd with the put. We were told uh, in the chat, actually, uh, we are we are watching you. Shout out Kristen. He says, uh, friend and school club teammate is Brianna Murgatroyd, number seven. And uh, we were told as well that she can, yeah, she can certainly... Uh, put it. She can put it. On 100% she can put it. Yeah, we saw that. And Beautiful. actually, 
Kristen was one of the fans at home that Brianna wanted to shout out. So uh, oh, nice. Faith fully repaid as New Zealand take half 8-3. What that, a performance. What a performance. That, that got serious quickly. New Zealand just, after this timeout that Germany took to recollect, New Zealand came out firing. And now they're going to have to s clean up that energy, stay that high for the second half. I mean, that's what the car who can do. You know, the zone defense gets short, get short field turnovers, which you can punish or not even need to by catching the Callahan. And if it's turning over slightly further downfield, well, we know what a weapon this deep game is and they can put on points in bunches really quickly. So as we let these teams recollect, we are gonna take a little break as well and be back with you in a few minutes. Bichon picks up and they've got a short field. They've got another goal. It's tied up at 12. I cannot believe what goes. I'm seeing Can here. Lola Dam chase that one down? That is a score for Hashley Gerald Fantastic run by Julia Lola. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. And we believe that that requires knocking down the paywall. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch, and we want them to go viral. When you become a member, you enable us to improve our working relationships with tournament organizers, events and federations. And you'll help us to produce live stories for Ultimate fans and to generate new fans with our enhanced content. We, we are, are a group, group of, of Ultimate, Ultimate players, players, coaches and video enthusiasts. And we want to bring you coverage on a more consistent basis. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Ciao ragazzi, support the community. And subscribe Ulti TV. There's lots of the videos, posting, everything. Check it out. <laughs> they are the best one. Woo! If you want to grow Ultimate Sports, uh, become a member of Ulti TV. Regardez Ulti TV. Deviens un membre d'Ulti TV et fais grandir ta communauté. Top Ulti TV. Follow me. Et regarde me. Ulti me. Top vendre à maintenant. Si quieres ajudar à Ulti TV, puedes ser miembro de Ulti TV. Everyone, follow Ulti TV on Instagram, on YouTube. They've got everything. Best like, content. Like their pictures if you love free speech. Just do it. You. We're counting on you. Give me a love for Ulti TV. Game member of Ulti TV. Mamma mia. Contribue au développement d'Ultimate avec Ulti TV. Like and subscribe, Ulti TV, the best in the world. We want to grow Ultimate. We want to grow Ultimate. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We have our signature style two camera setup. With thousands of hours of experience. And our crew is globally dispersed to facilitate coverage everywhere around the world. We can also scale back our broadcast with just one elevated camera. Or scale up with two fields, two cameras and two commentators on each. We work with local teams and we all have the same mission, to grow the sport and bring it to new people by providing live coverage and new stories. 
Become a member today on our Patreon page. And, and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories, ideas and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. Gonna have to bid. Oh, just a oh, just a football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. We are back here, second half action during the last game of the day. New Zealand taking on Germany in the under 20 women's division. And we've got, we had a bit of a run from the New Zealand side, haven't we, Benji? They are going into the second half with an 8-3 lead. And I'll tell you what, they look pretty good value for it as well. Big plays all over the field, huge deep looks, defensive bids. And a Callahan thrown into the bargain as well. Yeah, just everything you want from a good game when you're part of the New, Ze New Zealand supporting contingent. On the other end, on the other side, uh, Germany have had some good looks. They had a bit of bad luck, but in general, they've, in my personal opinion, lacked focus and a drive towards the end zone. Yeah. They've moved the disc a lot. They haven't really managed to move it forward. And to be fair to them, they're not the only team that seems to suffer th with that problem. We've seen a lot of teams come down with really effective zone defenses. And generally, it feels like a lot of offenses haven't known where to look. Yeah, that's a pity because you have to, even if a zone prevents you from, from throwing downfield, at some point someone's going to be open downfield. You have to connect to those other players, those three to four players down the field. You cannot comp compromise. You still need to find ways. Yeah, you to still need to find ways people. to attack yeah. it. Shout out to everyone watching at home, whether you're in Germany, here in Poland, even in New Zealand on the other side of the world, where it, I am told is about three in the morning. And actually, Coach Ian Stewart came over and said, uh, ask if we would give a shout out to Rebecca and Sally watching at home who, you know, credit to, I mean, obviously, we thank everyone for watching regardless of where you are, but I think it takes a special commitment if you are, uh, you know, in the middle of the night. Another shout out coming in from the New Zealand side to one of the players who unfortunately tore her ACL just before, Oof. Eva Language, also supporting the team at home. Shout out to you. Thanks for, y for the support. Really strong pull there from Germany to begin this half. Yeah, amazing stuff. Bowen now looking. Finds Hawthorne. Whitlock. How do I get to Hawthorne? Whitlock. And now Bowen throws it deep and into the hands of a German defender. Apparently they've looked at New Zealand's game plan now. Yeah, I do feel like New Zealand were certainly being a bit more uh, deliberate about how they were trying to break that zone down with a lot going for with a lot more intent. But Hooker is a formidable deep defender as she displayed there. Just 
Disc on the far side now and put deep. Stoffers just out of her hands and she was really, really close to falling over, trying to get there, but not getting herself to lay out. It feels like if she could have just got over that final hurdle, she yeah. would have had the score. She definitely would have would have gotten there with just a just a fall to the ground maybe because the disc was just a little bit bit too low her, for her big frame. And so often it's a it's a mental more than a physical thing. Lawson over the top and out of the reach for Fulton, which gives Germany another opportunity of a break early in the second half. Yeah, after finishing this first half really strongly, New Zealand just m maybe struggling to find their fluency again. Good reset from the German side. Kintrup. Fortano. Back to Kintrup again. The lefty putting it out to space and a a poached defender going to guard, leaving one defender wide open, and that is a collection on the line, and it's called in by the players, and that's a break for Germany to start the second half. That is exactly what they needed. Let New Zealand go. That, no, that they're not going to go down quietly. It's bank fits on the far sideline. We wondered whether she was going to be able to tow the line, but just about manages to keep it in. To be honest, Benji, I didn't even see where that disc was because there's so many people in front, right in front of me. <laughs> Couldn't follow the play. Here's the turnover that gave Germany the disc the earlier in the time. point. Yeah, there's that deep shot. I liked it when it came up, but I didn't see Rucka lurking there. Showing she can play defense just as well as she can handle for that German side. There was the shot for Stoffels that was slightly overcooked. And there's Pettersson in front of the end zone. You can see there actually on the replay that Bang Fitz is very clear about trying to keep that right foot above the line and make sure that it doesn't come down until after she secured the catch. Very good body awareness. This is really hard when you're trying to, to keep your eyes on the disc to... to actually catch it to also think about where to place your feet. Her home city is Kirchheim unter Tech, wherever that is. Uh, Germany. Oh, really? Germany, yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my German geography is not, not massively hot, I'll no, be no, honest. No, mine, mine either. One would expect me to maybe know a bit more about it, but I don't. Sorry about that. Claridge. Working it with Grant. Martha putting it to the near side. Grant looking for an option. Takes the reset. Uh, apparently, Kachheim und Tech is uh, not too far from Stuttgart. Huh. There you go. The disc is on the far side now, and a huck goes up into the hands of Algaia. I'll be honest, Algaia looked the only person likely to bring that down. Yeah. She was just in a very good position. But New Zealand, they give their they give their players license to shoot it deep, trust them to get it back, and if not, it doesn't matter. Go out there and try it again. Oh, and that is a put out into space. It just hangs for long, and that's another break for Germany. They have definitely found their energy. Yeah, Kampfert catching the break, and it's not the first time we've seen uh, seen the Germans put these discs up that sail out of the sideline, but not for the first time as well. They get the edge on that throw right, so it rolls and curves its way back in bounds. Here's Algaia picking it off deep. That throw perfectly weighted, and then this is just... Yeah, it's Camfer who not actually threw to shoots in the first place. Yeah, not the best execution, but I mean, if it works and if it floats long enough for someone to get get down with it, that works. 
Yeah, and I think, you know, given they've been broken a couple of times to start the second half, not a surprise to see New Zealand call the, time, call the time out here. Let me put my teeth back in. So as they're trying to get the, that energy from the first half back, we are also going to take a short break to recollect and we will be back with you shortly. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a <laughs> football. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe well. just that boost of energy they needed. We are back to live action after this time out taken by New Zealand. They were up eight to three at half. Now Germany has managed to break them twice at the beginning of the second half. And they are trying to get back in there, get feed on that energy they have built up during that first half. Some of the other games going on in this division at the moment. Great Britain down 11-1 to France. Oui. What a performance. Well, you can see it on the far field beyond us. Czech Republic 7, Canada 6. Oh, that is tight. That is tight. That must also be a very good game. And it was very nearly 7-7. Oh, and another big disc. Just out of, in and out of the reach for Swinson. Yeah, she got her body to the disc, but it's always difficult when it comes down at quite a vertical angle. It's really easy for it to just snake its way through. Yeah. It's a very thin thing, that Frisbee. Wagner looking for an option. Goes for the inside. That was close to being a D. Schutz putting it up and over any German players that might have come to collect. Yeah, looking for Sarah Hermeking, but just couldn't link that up. And that is a big, another big put up for New Zealand this time. Works easily for Fulton, who goes to the ground, but stands up and quickly puts it into the end zone for the goal. And that was easy. Three passes for the score. It's King Griffin again with the goal, and we saw it from New Zealand. It doesn't matter if they take some deep shots and they don't come off because they've been given the freedom to attack those options. You know, they've, been, they've got the backing of the coaching staff and of their teammates as well to, to open it up. And you see there Fulton rises high to bring that down with two hands and then picks herself up and immediately shoots deep herself, finding Stephanie King Griffin to put New Zealand four points up again. That was just exactly what they needed. An offensive hold that looked very clean. Of course, it wasn't a clean hold. They had a turn, but this, at the second time of asking, beautiful put. Beautiful puts, because they were multiple, right? But nice. Yeah, it's been, an, it's been an entertaining game, I think. It, have re it really has. And you know, there's this cliche, I've mentioned it before um, today, that it feels tighter than it is. Yeah. Or does it looks like? It feels like it's really a, a very close game. I think whereas the scoreline just really doesn't show that. I think the difference has just been that New Zealand have been... They've looked more consistent with it. We've seen Germany play really well, but only in flashes and fits and starts. And they haven't necessarily put it together for more than a couple of points in a row yet. I say yet because certainly they have the ability to do so. We'll see if they can do it now with Franke. Just 
out of her hands, and that is lack of consistency for sure. Yeah, it was a little bit behind, so just stick out a hand and hope it sticks. Oh, and she definitely sticked out a hand here to collect that disc before it hit the ground, but she just couldn't quite put her hands around it. Yeah, Simard got into a really good position, but it's so tricky to get those just to make sure they nestle in there as... Peterson just releasing that disc too late. And that is a huge put into the end zone and two people around it, but no one really... Yeah, I wonder if McCoy just maybe slightly uh, slightly put off her teammate Simard there. Maybe. She was definitely in the way, but it could have, it might have been intended for her, you never know. Oh, and this time, a dro a attempt to drop it, but then c catch it, caught it anyway. Frank Canal. Peterson. She overshoots her target and it's just going to be collected by New Zealand again. Brown covered that ground so quickly, charging forward from the deep space. And it's so important to attack those discs and Samara just out of the reach. Again, this New Zealand side, they're fearless. They will take on any shot. And it has worked out so well for them as this is another multiple turnover point with Franke on the far sideline, trapped there. And she holds a hammer. And a stall out is called at the other side of the pitch where the disc landed. Didn't even see that as well. And it's a con It's an accepted stall as well. Accepted stall. It, I thought you made the different hand signal, but that was just my Yeah, she, I think she was starting there. And then, oh, no, here we go. Arms outstretched. So New Zealand will get the disc right on the end zone line. It's hard to score right on the end zone line. As I say that, Franca redeems herself and pivots already, which means she has to stay in the back of the end zone, which might not have been the most intelligent thing to do. But that's just between you and me, Benji. And again, it's another situation where two receivers getting in each other's way. I like the hammer. It was a good way of accessing the space. But they need to be a bit more vocal and communicative as to who's going to bring that in. Huh. And if you ask me, starting from over there, where the hammer landed, to go into the end zone is far easier than to, 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 to stay right in front of the end zone line and try to get that disc in. Yeah, New Zealand going for the deep shot there. They had the open swing available, but they're continually looking to be aggressive. And Franke once again redeeming her hammer with a very t similar t defense to the one we saw in the, f in the last possession. But this time, the up the line shot not connecting puts New Zealand into a position of getting an easy goal with a two-meter pass. <laughs> I mean, it was so underwhelming, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it wasn't a score. But they all count the same, whether you bang it the length of the field or whether it's just a... A simple pop into the end zone. And that's the beauty of ultimate part of it, at least. Yeah, there's no style points necessarily. No. Nah. Not we on the scoreboard. Not on the scoreboard. We do have. I mean, yeah, it's style certainly, certainly, you know, those, For those, preference. the crazy plays that we need some fans at home and elsewhere on the field site. But yes, they do not actually count, count double. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, are you planning something? I, I had to be fair. I think I have played tournaments where, like, oh, like if you score from end zone to end zone or overheads, can the, you know, they count extra. Uh, absolutely not the rules here, of course. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that? Would be wild. That'd be very wild. Then again, Franke did show us that she can throw a hammer. Yeah, we've seen it. We have seen it. And. When I started playing, those overheads were seen as, you know, they're risky options, don't take them. But, you know, they certainly have their uses. Against zones, it's great ways of hitting those soft spots on the field. Yeah, when you're looking at the end zones, often you get those really tight stacks and it's a really aggressive way of attacking that break side. I absolutely agree. Also, they're really fun. Yeah. And that is, that is important. You've got to enjoy yourself out there. Yeah, you do. We do. Oh, and that is overthrown. 
and the New Zealand receiver just in time there, putting it up into the end zone. Many bodies underneath it, and what a grab for New Zealand to get another break in. 11-5, the score now. Yeah, it's Swinson. She's got that uh, fern painted on her right cheek and uh, the plaster on her forehead, which I forgot to ask about, actually. But we saw her brother uh, be very effective for the under-20 open side yesterday. And uh, she's demonstrating that she's uh, she's no slouch either. Bowen with a beautiful put into the end zone. Bit of a jump ball, but she doesn't mind. Swinson's not the only... Uh, not the only player on this side who has a sibling here this week. Uh, Georgia Lewis, her, her brother Jack is playing. And uh, Tia Lawson, her brother Ty is playing as well. And there's also a pair of brothers on the New Zealand Open side. So four sibling partnerships in all. We talked earlier about those familial connections. And uh, yeah, just as true in New Zealand as it is uh, here in Europe. Yeah. Well, for Germany, it's, it's very present. Also, a uh, player on that under 20 team that is not currently playing is a uh, is a uh, wolf her whole her whole family is here actually her brother is coaching the under 20 open team Aaron Wolf who is also part of Wall City Berlin and her mom and her dad they are here camping just uh, just near the fields watching some frisbee when you shouted out Aaron uh, Joel Ben Joseph who's a uh, who's man in camera two at the moment just gave a, a very a, a pleased smile and point to you. What a throw over the top here for Germany, opening up the field. This is how you work against a zone like this. I like that. They're taking on those slightly more ambitious shots now. I, I might want to say it's a bit late in the game to, to change it now. But, but better late than never. Yeah. But still cool to see. You can see that they can they can take those shots if they want to, and they can connect on them. But nevertheless, the disc again in the hands of New Zealand. Whitlock alone in the handler set. Yeah, it felt like we called Whitlock's name a lot in the first half. Not so much in this second so far, but uh, Bankovitz has hit the ground. I'm not sure whether that was due to contact on the mark or what. Oh, it looked like it looked like he stopped before. Oh, she steps on her foot. Ah. Yeah, that happens. Two players being really close together. Maybe an indication that she might be a bit too close. Potentially. Just want to put it out there. I don't know if it's true or not. But fortunately, she is fine. It's an uncontested foul, of course. That's always what you want to see as well, that a uh, player's fine after the injury and the foul is accepted. Just a slight little change in the verbiage of that. It's taken <laughs> I'm still getting used to it as well. I should be. I already played a whole event with this, but... I mean, old, old habits die hard. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, and a huge shot goes up. High star count and collected by Lewis for the score. And tracking towards the back of the end zone. Can you see why they like these deep puts? Because you know they've got strong athletes as well with those wide wingspans. Quite appropriate, I guess, for a team named after an eagle, the Kahu. But again, it's it's about reading them as well, getting yourself in position. So you know, recognizing okay, the stall's getting high. Maybe this is a scenario where we need to be looking into that deep space because that's the area that we want to attack. Even if we don't get it, we can give them bad field position. But Lewis tracks this well, and Germany calling another timeout here. Yeah, it's also, of course, you can get worse field position to the opponent, but also, if, if your downfield cutters know it's a high stall and they search for it, then you have a very high chance of this connecting, uh, this connection working. If they know where you like to put it. If you if, if if you're aware that, for example, let's let's take another example. If you're aware that Franke on the German side likes to put up a hammer when she's in trouble, go put yourself in that position where you know she will put the hammer into. This will really help a, a, a shot in the high stall situation connect. Yeah, you, s you see often these sorts of playstyles, they're described as unusual, unorthodox because you're not used to them. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're 
bad or wrong. It's just a question of you're not you the opposition not being used to it. You know the fans or commentators, whatever, not being used to it. But sometimes that's a really huge boon to your to you as a team because if you play in a slightly different style that your opposition's not used to, you can really catch them off guard. It can take them a while to adjust to that. Yeah, we saw that with the New Zealand zone that they haven't really used in the second half. Not as much, no. It's come out on occasion and been effective. And there was a point when it really seemed like Germany were fighting right back into this game with a couple of breaks to start this second half. But since then, New Zealand have pulled away once more. Yeah, they're up 12 to 5 now. Germany taking a timeout to maybe rekindle that energy that they had at the beginning of the half again. Huge pull out of the New Zealand sign. It's going to land just in bounds and will be collected. Put to the middle to Algaia. Schütz. Oh, there, there they are with the zone again. Schütz looking for a reset, finds it in Algaia. Oh, what a grab by Schütz there on the far side. But still, it's just the handlers working with each other. Not necessarily gaining yards. And the downfield cutters are rather unattended by their handling counterparts. Agaya to Schütz. I feel like I've said those two names and solely those two names for this point, but whatever works. And that was a beautiful grab by Agaya. Sometimes this is what you need. You need to have players really step up and bear the brunt of the load, really take the mantle on. Oh, Maya Butling was on the field. Haven't really seen her yet. She's one of the main handlers for this side, I'd say. Yeah, maybe just sometimes knowing to get out of the way, let other players take that starring role, but just be ready to step up when needed. Maura, back to the other side of the field shots. Near, near us here is Maya Botling. And now Schütz is knocking on the doorstop and into the end zone. Inside shot, that was beautiful. That was a brilliant possession. Mm -hmm. I agree. A clean hold for the Germans. Just exactly what they needed. And probably what they drew up during that timeout. Yeah, they... They got the disc moving quickly. They didn't let it get trapped in high stall counts. They found those, you know... Slightly more shapely throws around the cup. They moved it back and forth as well. A lot of play on that far sideline, but they swung it over to this near side where needed as well, trying to utilize the width of the pitch. Yeah, much more... Ma uh, it's calling it a mature... More mature than their previous possessions feels a little bit unfair. But you know what I mean. It feels like... Yeah. Uh, Collected, calm. Yes, 100%. Just, yeah rethinking your throw before you actually put it there. Because for those zones, what I think is one of the most effective things is you see an open option, but you don't see the person that is lurking in near it. So if you take the second to look at that again and see, oh, wait, there is a player nearby. I just didn't see them before. Then you can really take a lot of pressure out of that zone by just re restructuring your angles. So New Zealand on offense. Whitlock into the middle to Bowen. Good collection there by Fulton. Back to Fulton in the middle, getting every other now. I like this, seeing that she's poached in space and uh, utilizing that to run the disc through her. Up the line gainer for Bowen. And another up the line 
That is in the end zone for Whitlock, and that's a goal for her. Yeah, we mentioned that Whitlock leads the team in assists for New Zealand. Uh, had seven coming into this game, but showing that when needs be, she's happy to take charge and go to the end zone as well. Yeah, that works, especially on those nifty handler up the line cuts. Yeah, they set those up the line cuts, set them up beautifully that time. Wait till the defenders just maybe on the heels ever so slightly, taking that inside line, and it's getting the throw out early as well to space, rather than trying to put them on them. Tossing that high release there from Bowen, and it finds Whitlock to put New Zealand within a couple of victory. Oh yeah. That's what they're saying on the sideline. Yeah, Bowen just gave us like the finger guns. Yeah. So uh, clearly New Zealand uh, enjoying themselves out there. Hey, I would be too if I'd play like that. Yeah, I think it's a credit to uh, to what their uh, to what the setups trying to do for them. That's trying to empower them, get them to take on big roles, and get them to enjoy the ultimate and uh, yeah, play get with confidence. Get them enjo to enjoy the ultimate. That is, I think, one of the key key things you want to achieve for an under twenty or also under seventeen event. One hundred percent. It's partly about you know the results on the field, but it's also more about you know, just developing them as players and people as well. Couldn't have said it better. As Germany come out on offense once again, and I thought she had thrown directly into the ground because I didn't see the person standing there. But of course, a good collection from Germany, and they're working it up the field quickly now. Comfort. Schutz. Inside shot. Towards the sideline for Maya Bootling. They're calling for an extra player. And just in front of the end zone, Germany now looking for an option. Find it, find, finding it in comfort. Emma King. Just outside the end zone, fl flying down, falling down for to get that off. Back into the middle, and that's tipped by the defender. And that is a co an opportunity for New Zealand to close the gap. The throw was slightly offline, and Swinson pounced to palm it away, and it has the disc in her hands now. High release, or a bladey shot from Swinson. Looking for a reset and gets it towards the middle. Opening up the field. Just in front of the end zone now. Popping it in for the break. And New Zealand is within one. What a wicked low release forehand that is. Sneaking it underneath the mark and really rifled it in there. And that, that shot is so hard to execute well. Because a flick always is, can get really sippy if you just put it out to space right in front of you. But then have this having it enough flow so that the receiver can just run under it and receive it e easily. Something that I've really enjoyed seeing actually from both sides here is that there's obviously respect, but as uh, you know, there there's a lot of interaction on the sidelines, you know, checking when after, you know, players have hit the floor that they're okay, you know, congratulating them if they make good plays. Things like that, showing that they've got that, yeah, mutual respect and understanding that is so key to the spirit of the game. That's always a great, great opportunity to talk and get to know people from all over the world. Right. Such an event. Create, set up those uh, relationships and friendships that you can hopefully last through the years and through the various uh, language or international barriers. So Germany on the field now. Franke fakes off. Her fellow handler goes to Bankwitz, who searches for an option and finds Franke. Those two trusting each other well. Kintrup looking for an option, finds one in Franke. This zone biting down on the handlers for that Germany side and a hammer over the top nifty throw by Franke and a huge backhand wind up and that's a goal for Germany 
They close the gap just a little bit, making it 14 to 7. Didn't look entirely comfortable on the reception. Well, it was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> Nobody. But I agree, Benji. <laughs> but that is credit to, you know, the positioning and, you know, fundamentals. Getting your body behind the disc. So actually, if you fumble it, you give yourself the best chance of getting it at the second attempt and you see it there. Able to keep focus and keep eyes on the disc. It can be so important. Yeah, it's something that when you learn it early, it can help you a lot. Keep concentration in various moments. And I think focusing on the disc while catching it is one of the most important things that you can easily just practice and then, yeah, just ex put like this knowledge you can put over to very various other instances where you'd need concentration. Yeah, there's a reason you play all these kind of silly little games on the sideline, things like Flutterguts. Yeah. Oh, just I love that game. Just, you know, getting practice, making those awkward catches, keeping focus. All little tricks that come in handy. So New Zealand now just have to close it out. They'll have many opportunities on offense. But of course, they're looking to put it in on the first try. Fulton with a huge fake. Asks for people to come over and help. And that's a big put by Bowen into the end zone. Many bodies underneath it. But the disc only finds the ground. Yeah, the German defenders converge and just about do enough to stop Simard ending up with it. Also, I want to point this out now before the game ends. Sock game for both teams on point. Yeah, I've seen that. Pretty great. I like the full outfit coordination. Is it pedantic? Probably slightly. Is it aesthetically pleasing? Yes. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. So Germany with a break opportunity. Should... Puts the disc up to Rücke. We haven't really said her name a lot in the second half. Very dominant in the first half for this German side. Yeah, I think you've got to credit the New Zealand defense for that as well, helping to shut her down. Okay, right. That disc floating for quite a bit, but two New Zealand defender. Just I hear before <sighs> Helma King can make her way towards that disc and uh, float it out of bounds as well, I believe. It was indeed, so... Uh, Really tough reception. But Rookham probably felt like she had no option. Whitlock with a nifty catch. Up the line, but only into the hands of Schutz. Looking for an option and finds one in Rucker. Bankwitz going up the line. Just barely hung on to that disc. And another up the line shot into the end zone, and that's a break for Germ Germany. They're slowly closing that gap. Yeah, go to Hart. With the grab, getting Germany ever so slightly closer. The comeback is, you know, it's, it's implausible, but not impossible. Hannah go to Hart, his uh, younger sister playing in the under 17 team this week, so we uh, saw her in the previous game. Yeah, we did. And Germany taking a timeout here late in the game as they try and find a way to mastermind this comeback. That's as long as New Zealand have to put that final point in. That is very interesting. Because I would, I think I wouldn't have chosen to take a timeout if it was me, if it was Germany that called the timeout. Because I've, I've scored a point that was very good. I scored a break on top of that. My team is firing up and running, you know. They're hungry to get more and they're on a row now and the energy is up we've talked about game of, of runs and they, they're, they're certainly on a run now you feel like they might be cutting off their own momentum it could happen it's interesting of course both teams get two timeouts to use a half mm -hmm. Germany choosing to spend one here if they want to get back in they have to break seven times Again. Can happen. 
unlikely, but not, not impossible, impossible, and that's why you love it. Again, I will point back to the first game of the week, also in this division, when Poland were 11-5 down and took it all the way to 11 all in the universe. Well, I remember a game where Germany was up 14-10 to to Italy in 2019. Uh, and Italy won it. They did indeed. That was a huge upset. Oh, yeah, it was. I remember that. So, you know, anything is possible. A lot of things are possible. You can let us know in the comments if you think... If you believe. If you, yeah, what you believe. And who you're rooting for, of course. I'm just rooting for a good Frisbee. Good ultimate. That's who I'm rooting for. Nice. Oh, well, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad we're on the same page. I was going to say, it's good we're on the same team, yeah. Clark. To Cla Claridge. Up the line now, a bit of a commu uh, confusion as there's one player suspiciously open all the time. Yeah, against zones, you probably do see it happen a bit more frequently than you do with matches. That one hits the replay monitor. Oh, that is uh, that was um, very intense. Uh, I would like to that monitor. Yeah, I, I'm sure it's fine. It's only Milan's telly. Oh, that's okay. It's fine. He doesn't it, need that. Exactly. Milan disagrees. Oh. I've been to his house. He doesn't even use it. Algaia to pick up for Germany. Big gainer up the line. Kintrup. To the middle of the field, a big reset. A huge break is going to give them a lot of uh, horizontal field position rather than vertical. And Tarno is all alone, does not have a defender yet. I wonder if that's intentional, getting an, a, an additional defender down the field. I think it's probably one of those things where you, you take the deepest options first and then you play forward from that. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, and a shot that is too far out in front. A reset that the New Zealand side cannot connect on. And that is perfect field position for the Germans. Opinion in chat seems to be from probably uh, the New Zealand contingent that the car who have this in the bag. Not yet. But okay. certainly not yet. Algaia to, I believe it was Bankwitz with the, with the shot. Yeah, with Go. those long baggy sleeves. I believe it is Bankwitz. So in Germany, trying their utmost to eat away at this lead. We weren't necessarily sure about their choice of taking the time out before the point, but it seems to have worked. They've proven me wrong, yeah. I can admit that. I mean, that's that's basically what commentary is, isn't it? It's saying stuff only to immediately be proven wrong. Not immediately. Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I'm unexpectedly right. Sometimes I'm proven wrong even before I've said it. Nice. But then Don't... Un yeah. Yeah. I'll start saying something, and before I even get to the bulk of the point, the opposite happens, and you just kind of throw your hands up in oh, disgust. Well. I mean, uh, I'm always right. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Sure. Yeah. So New Zealand trying to keep the spirits high on the sidelines, keep themselves energised. One of the great things, of course, about the position that New Zealand are in is, yes, you obviously don't want to get broken a couple of times in a row, but you they've given so themselves the, they've given themselves so many opportunities because they've st they've kept their foot on the gas throughout this game. They've given themselves that cushion. Yep. I'm not worried. For New Zealand, what point would you be worried? Uh, 13, 14. <laughs> At so this point, I'd be like, oh. Just chuck it deep. Still got, still got a way to go in your yeah. eyes. Yeah. I think they have looked more clinical. Yeah, that was a lovely inside flick from Bowen to begin the possession. And as I say that, of course, commentator's curse. But Look, the commentator's curse isn't a thing. Nothing we say has any effect on what happens out there. But that was really unfortunate timing. <laughs> I, I, I've heard I'm really good with that. 
Good reset for Maya Bootling. Up the line to Bankwitz. And then Whitlock with the D. Yeah, not sure whether she got a hand on it or whether she just did enough to stop Kampfer collecting it. Either way, the result's the same. She just stressed her too much. The old intimidation D. And that is a huge put by Bowen into the end zone. And Röcker underneath it. We've seen it before this game. If you want to test out a German defender deep, Röcker's probably not the one. No, not ideal. Bankwitz up the line. Or rather on the line. Nice fake out and what a D. What a beautiful awareness by Bowen. Just seeing that in the peripheral vision and peeling off her matchup to go and get a hand in there. Lawson puts it back into the hands of Bowen, who's decided not to put it this time. Whitlock, just in front of the end zone, she puts it up! And that's a score and the winning point for New Zealand. Yeah, I like that look from Whitlock, because rather than put it up to a defender where they've kind of got that one-on-one -on -one match up deep, what she's doing is she's pivoting and she's looking at the break side and sitting it into that space where the receiver's always going to be the favourite to get there first. It's a very much a case of if you're not getting there, well, it's not because you were deed, it's because it was overthrown. Yeah. There's the first deep D from Rucker. And this time again, maybe it's a case of just picking that match up a little bit better as well. You see Whitlock turn and pivot for it early. Still the same target in King Griffin. With a number of goals this game, but that time the defence gets there too late and New Zealand close out the victory. New Zealand did, as I said it before, it did seem like the better team, the more collected team. Also, uh, the luck was a bit on their side, but in general, it had a very tight matchup with the Germans. That worked out well. And this is the end of day two, or shall I say day three? Day three, day yeah. Three. With that win, New Zealand guarantee themselves a place in the top power pool with just one initial pool game to come against the USA and Germany. We'll see them in the bottom power pools where they're going to have to try and fight their way up for and a chance to play in the top brackets. And they will have every opportunity to do so. So we might... Look at the game happening on the adjacent field over there. Yeah, that's Canada versus the Czech Republic over there. And Canada rushed the field. So I think possibly that's a break of serve that's gone the Canadians' way. Definitely looks like it, but uh, apparently there's a call. So don't leave us quite yet because we have more action for you. So a bit of extra. Some uh, free Frisbee for you. Oh, everything is free, Benji. Didn't well, you didn't you know? Well yes, but even bonus, even more free frisbee. More free frisbee. Of course, all the games this week are broadcast live and for free on YouTube for the under seventeen EYUC games. That's on Ulti TV's YouTube channel for the under twenty divisions. That's right here on the World Flying Disc Federation YouTube. We also have one game that's still uh up for grabs, I'm gonna say tomorrow. Oh. Uh, if you are a patron of Ulti TV uh, you can find more information on our website, which is ulti.tv, or on patreon.com slash ulti.tv. So for as little as a cup of coffee a month, you can help support what Ulti TV does, and patrons are able to vote in some of the matchups that we're displaying this week. One such matchup is Game 2 tomorrow. So that's 11 o'clock local time, under 20 open division action. You can pick from Canada versus Belgium, Italy versus Poland, or New Zealand, again, versus the Czech Republic. Oh. Three very enticing contests for you there. That sound, Every single one of them sounds very much interesting. Like one thing I want to watch. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've spoiled you for choice. And actually, this game here, the last two games we've, uh, we've streamed, the under-17 women's, that sudden death thriller, plus this under-20 women's game, were both decided by our ever-wise patrons. Nice. And so the Czech Republic turned after this call. Wait, no, Canada turned yep. after this call, giving the disc back to the Czech Republic. But now the disc goes all the way back to the other side of the field. 
The Canadian, uh, the Czechs are currently up 9 8 on oh. the scoreboard. That is very tight. <laughs> it's very, very tight. Especially because the time is. Nearly there. Nearly over as well. And oh, this time overshooting. Yeah, the other women's division game going on as well. Uh, Under-20 women's game has wrapped up with France running out 15-3 winners over Great Britain. Oh, and a collection there on the reset for the Czech Republic. And they're just in front of the end zone. Jumping it in are the Czech Republic. And that's plus two for them now with another call. Who does it? I think they're game? just discussing about whether or not this is in bounds. Yeah. Obviously, all the way over here. It to looked easy. But I mean, I don't, I don't have an angle on it, to be honest. They're calling it good. Nice. This would be huge. And it wouldn't be the first time that a team from the Czech Republic have knocked off Canada at a major tournament, thinking back to 2016 WUGC. When, uh, yeah, when the Czech mixed team beat the Canadians in power pools, I think. A game that is actually, I believe, available to watch on the WFTF YouTube channel. Yeah, it where is. Where you're I've watching this very game. I've, I've watched that quite a, a, a few times because I think it's so imp impressive. There's one player who still plays for the Czech's open side. Uh, I think his name is Riedlo. And he is single-handedly running around this Czech, like running this Czech mixed cup on their on their, um, on their their defense and then gets like ridic and a ridiculous amount of blocks just because he's such a huge frame and really can read people, like read whatever their, his opponent wants to do. He'll read low, he'll read high, <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> nice one, Minji. Okay, I was... You were thinking about that quite a bit. I was not displeased you? with that one. <laughs> you can be very pleased with that one. Yeah, also... It's excellent. Although they're wearing the whites, the, the, red, and the red and blue hooped check jerseys, I always, they're always my favourites. I oh. love them. Did you ask for someone to just trade one with you? Uh, I never have actually. I think next time I next time there's a they do any sort of kid order, I might ask uh, Rahel if she can. Just she get can, you one. Yeah. You should do that. Well, gee, I, you know what? Actually, I think I will do that because I think they're gorgeous. I've seen. Uh, I think they're master sides. So they've got a really fetching powder blue jersey as well, which they I really do. like. Goes that with their beautiful. goes with their matching fedoras, which. Is a fashion choice. I'll leave yeah. it there. True, true, true. So Canada underway. Yeah, down two here, ten eight. Czech Republic lead. They're also playing a bit of a poachy look or Sony look. From the Czech Republic, never. No. No. Certainly, it's uh, one of those things I associate actually with uh, Czech women's ultimate, especially is. They'll play really good zone defense, and on the turn, they'll, uh, they're not afraid to huck Chuck it. Huck it deep and do nothing else. Yeah, I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. if, you wanna if you want some action about of that, watch the windmill final 2022. Yep. We do see it there from 3SP, and uh, see it in various other games we've seen from Czech Women's Ultimate over the years as well. Oh, and what a nifty grab there by Burtney. Yeah, kind of, they were taking their time. Maybe had a couple of dicey passes, but they're just content, really, to take the open options when they're available. Not a lot of pressure on the handlers from the Czech side, rather preventing the deep shots to go up. Yeah, it's it's a zone that's designed to contain, I think, rather than necessarily aggressively force turns. And every now and again, they will jump in to create a bit of chaos. It's, yeah, it's about picking those moments. Yeah. Right. Yeah, a central handler now for them. Puts it to Lou. 
And then a captain I've mentioned before, Brittany. Brittany. Now they're gaining some yards and... That's the thing that... Checks call cool for the transition. Got to go one-on-one. -on -one. Canada tried to strike quickly, but the disc is just a little bit behind. And it'll give the checks the disc. That's what I mean. It's about testing the patience and maturity. A beautiful round shot. Now in the Czech Republic. Working it down, but... Cannot collect here. Connect, rather. Connect or collect. Yeah. Both works. I didn't want to say that, though. So, Canada, off to the races. Opening up the field now and putting it into the end zone for the goal. This makes a score. 9 to 10 in favor of the Czech Republic, and they had their opportunity to get another break, but could not quite. Yeah, it mayb in. maybe we shouldn't be surprised that this Czech women's team is putting in such a performance when you consider that a lot of this team would have played at EYUC here in 2019 and brought home the gold medal in the under 17 women's division. That really isn't surprising at all, that's true. And they knocked off Hungary in the final there. Mm -hmm. We've seen, we've streamed them before. Not not um, representing the women's side this this time and in the under twenty division, but going for the mixed rather. Yeah, and they've got a Hungary. The Hungarians have got a uh, under seventeen mixed team as well. Yeah, they're focusing on the development of their whole club rather than just parts and individual players this time. As some of them are not eligible for under seventeen anymore, and others are, there wouldn't have been enough for a women's team. I was told. Yeah, it's the first time we've actually seen uh, a uh, a mixed division at WJUC in in under twenties, and it's good. I think it's the idea is that you know it's going to create opportunities for teams that couldn't necessarily turn out single gender teams yeah. to give more people opportunities to play, and that's what we should be doing, especially at the youth level, is creating as many opportunities to play as possible. In my eyes, yeah, I agree. I completely agree with that. So the Czech Republic facing some kind of fence look from the Canadians. But that's a defense thrown right into the Canadian defense here. A very tall player now with the disc. And a defense from the Czech side getting the disc back. That throw just hung up for a second and it allowed the checks to close in on it. Can't really take any risks at all, can you? It looks like Marazova who knocked it away. 3SB player. Now that one's dropped in the end zone. I think the, the time cap has just gone. And I think this makes it 10 all. Game to 11 in universe. Oh, what a... What a spicy bow! Uh, what a spicy end of this game here. Right. We saw it yesterday as well. We snuck a little bit of Great Britain versus Sweden in the under-17 men's. Oh, did you? Going to Universe as well. Exciting. Who won that? Sweden. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. They got some some good good juniors out in Sweden. Out they there. really do. Yeah. I remember. Uh, the under under seventeen women back in um, twenty nineteen, the likes of Angergaard and Victorson. Well, I remember streaming a game at uh, EYUC in twenty seventeen out in Vaneland in the Netherlands, uh, which was Sweden versus uh, Slovenia. Before at this point, I kind of didn't really know how promising a lot of that Slovenian pro crop would prove to be and it hammered it down it was torrential rain I think it was it might have been just me in the end actually by that point and the game went about you know half an hour plus into the cap it was a grind but there was so much quality on show 
It was it was phenomenal to watch. Yeah, that Slovenian side, unfortunately. I think a lot of them have aged out of the. Yeah, uh, no, but they have also now. a lot of them have stopped playing and tended to other things. So and nobody has really picked up anything there. It's a shame. Often you see these kind of golden generations almost come through, mm -hmm. and you know. You want to see countries capitalize on success. Use that to drive more youth recruitment. One should. But then with these youth programs, if we, as we have mentioned during the day, it is almost always volunteer work. 100%, yeah. And this is the start at recruiting kids as a teacher or going to schools to, to showcase Frisbee just or to, to teach it to children, to teach it to your friends. And that takes a lot of... Takes a lot of time, time and a lot yeah. of effort. As the Czech Republic starts their universe point. There's a loud contingent from both teams on the sideline. Love to see that the other... The other teams are out there supporting as that one's tipped. And what a beautiful catch. Full extension layout and she got it. But there's going to be a discussion. It's Christina Bulanova who looks like she came down with it. Ouch. That, that must have hurt. Getting the impact from the... Getting the impact from the ground and then... A player on top of you. So Canada getting ready to check this in. Reset comes off easily. What an inside shot just in front of the red zone. It's the captain now, Tlusta. Up the line. Into space and a Canadian player maxed that disc down. Yeah, saw the receiver streaking into space. So thought to put it out there and let them chase it down. The problem was that it was just so far out there that it invited the defensive pressure. So much pressure on the Czech side here, but Canada reels it down as... There's a call on the field and it looks like it's a stall out. Lots of heads in hands. It's always tough. And it's going to be contested and they're opting for the around shot. Big fakes for Can Canada here. High release and well collected, directing traffic as well into the middle of the field. Now they're off to the races, are Canada. Oh, and that disc jumps out of the hands of the Canadian player. It might have just been the easiest shot they have had all possession, and that one just does not connect. Yeah, both of these teams have won both their games so far. So looking like they'll take the top two spots and go into that top power pool but of course carrying the wick game forward you always want to get the upper hand give yourself the best possible chance of making it into the final of course you can and if you're as close as universe point and having turned it's just up for grabs and it comes down to a bit of luck and a lot of mental strength Luster. Looks for a reset and gets it off as well. Yeah, Tlusta's one of those players who won gold in under-17s. Yeah, and I feel like... So, she's part of the 3SB team, and I feel like I've played against her for ages. Yeah, and she's also represented the Czech women at the senior level as well. So that was a big collision there.
Yeah, you see the disc is tipped. The Czech player keeps eyes on it and tries to make the catch. But the Canadian player who got the initial uh, the initial D, I think, Bridney, maybe prevents, when she's kind of coming through, maybe prevents her from getting a second effort at it. There's, there is body contact, definitely. The question is, is is it is it her space that... So who has a position? And who fouls or who initiates the body contact? That is the question for me, but I could not answer that, to be honest. And it's a such a high stakes game that everything seems like a wrong outcome because she did initially bobble it, but it was contested and go back. It goes back to the Czech player. Sticky fingers. Canadian sideline wants defense. I don't think they want it. They already got it. I think they want it again. Another shot for the end zone. The Czechs run it down for the win. And the Czechs run down the field. I mean, to cheer. wouldn't you as well? Oh, I would. I was. <laughs> I was in the position to do that before. It's a similar shot to where they had an earlier turnover. Mm -hmm. Where that time it was thrown to that time throw to space, but there are other players close by and they could close down. This time they kept that space clear. Yeah, definitely better spacing. And Marazova was able to hustle away into the end zone for a statement victory. What a day we've had here at JJUC, the Joint Juniors Ultimate Championships, comprising of the World Juniors Ultimate Championships, which is under 20 mixed open and women's and the European Youth Ultimate Championships EYUC under 17 mixed open and women's and we have plenty action to come for you tomorrow five games on Tuesday and all this week as well it's been uh, a wonderful experience so far of course a reminder that if you are a patron of Ulti TV then you can vote on one of our games tomorrow, the 11 o'clock game slot, the under-20 Open, Canada-Belgium, Italy-Poland, or New Zealand-Czech Republic are your choices. And for as little as a cup of coffee of the month, you can help uh, Ulti TV bring free live ultimate to the people and have your say in some of the games that we stream as well. Uh, all the under-20 games will continue to be streamed right here on the World Flying Disc Federation YouTube channel with all the uh, under-17 games streamed over on Ulti TV's YouTube channel. Thank you very much for joining us. I cannot wait to see you back here, 9 o'clock local time, bright and early tomorrow morning. Christina, what a day it's been. Yeah, it's been very intense, but so much good content and so, many, so much young talent on display that I really can't wait for the rest of the week to, to give us more of that. 100%. So for all our Ulti TV broadcast crew, for the wonderful Christina Obermeyer, I'm Benji Reese saying that we will see you on the other side. Right now, he's gonna have to bid. Oh, just a, oh, just a. For ball. <laughs> Huge layout block. Unbelievable stuff on the front corner of the end. Zone. Maybe wow. just that boost of energy they needed. TV.